I'm Ms. Jenna, and I'm from the St. Clair County Library System. Welcome to Folk Tales and Fables, our series where we're going to introduce you to a series of stories from around the world. Now, a fable and a folk tale are similar kinds of stories, but they're just a little bit different. A fable is a made-up story where most of the characters are going to be animals, but they're going to act like people. And almost all the time, they're going to teach a lesson. A folk tale is a story that's based in a particular place and it's told over and over and passed down through generations. And it's going to change a little bit depending on who the storyteller is. A folk tale might have a lesson or it might not. It might have characters who are animals or people or both. And there are different kinds of folk tales. One kind of folk tale is called a pourquoi tale. And pourquoi is French for why. And these tales try to explain why something happens. And that's the kind of folktale we have today. This is a West African folktale called Why Mosquitoes Buzz in People's Ears. Mosquito met Iguana coming from the waterhole one morning and said, Zzz, you never guessed what I just saw. And Iguana said, try me. Mosquito said, I saw a farmer digging yams almost as big as me. And Iguana said, Mosquito? Yam. Mosquito? Yam. How big do you think you are? That is the stupidest thing I have ever heard. I would rather be deaf than listen to that kind of ridiculous lie. And he put two sticks in his ears. Just as a public service announcement, don't put sticks in your ears. And off the road he went, ugh, muttering about the mosquito. I can't believe he laughs around. He didn't even see when he passed by Python. He was so busy grumbling to himself. And Python said, hello, Iguana, hello, Iguana. Well, I wonder why he's not saying hi to me. Maybe he's mad at me. <gasps> Maybe he's plotting mischief against me. And Python was so frightened, he looked for the nearest place to hide. Unfortunately, the nearest place to hide was Rabbit's burrow. And the big snake slithered down into the hole. Rabbit was at home, and when she saw Python slither in, now what do pythons sometimes eat? That's right, rabbits. Rabbit took off out of that burrow as fast as she could go, running across the fields. Crow saw Rabbit running and thought there was some kind of danger. Well, Python. And he started to sound the alarm. Gah! Gah! Flying off, calling all the way. Monkey heard him. And Monkey assumed there was some kind of great danger and took off helping, leaping through the trees, branch to branch. But unfortunately, he landed on a branch that was dead and it broke and it fell right onto an owl's nest, killing one of the owlets. Now, ordinarily, Mother Owl would have been home, but she was still hunting that morning. She was just looking for one more tasty little bit to bring back to her hungry babies. And when she returned, her remaining owlets told her that the monkey had killed the owlet. Mother Owl was so sad, so sad. She mourned all day. She mourned all night. Now, Mother Owl's job each morning was to wake the sun, to call it and wake it up so that the day could begin. But Mother Owl was too sad to wake the sun. And the night went on. The night went on for a long time. A really long time. A really, really long time. And the animals knew that night was going on much too long. They began to worry that the day would never come. And finally, King Lion called a meeting of all the animals. Now Mother Owl did not come. So Antelope was sent to fetch her. When she arrived, 
King Lion asked her, Mother Owl, why have you not woken the sun? And Mother Owl said, Oh, King Lion, it was the monkey. He killed my owlet, and I am too sad to wake the sun. So King Lion said, Ah, it was the monkey who killed the owlet, and now Mother Owl won't wake the sun so that the day can come. King Lion turned to Monkey. He said, Monkey, why did you kill Mother Owl's baby? And Monkey said, it, 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 it was Crow's fault. Crow was calling the alarm, and I was only trying to help. I was swinging and leaping from branch to branch, and I landed on a dead branch, and it fell on the owl nest and killed the owlet. And King Lion said, Ah, so it was the crow who alarmed the monkey, who killed the owlet. And now Mother Owl won't wake the sun so that the day can come. King Lion turned to the crow and he said, Crow, why were you sounding the alarm? And Crow said, it, it was, it was Rabbit. Rabbit was running and running across the fields. Isn't that a good reason to sound the alarm? And King Lion said, aha, it was the rabbit who startled the crow, who alarmed the monkey, who killed the owlet. And now Mother Owl won't wake the sun so that the day can come. King Lion turned to rabbit and the poor little thing was just a wreck. She was terrified. And she raised her little paw and she said, oh, King Lion, it's not my fault. It was Python's fault. I was safe and snug in my burrow all by myself, minding my own business. And this giant snake came in and I thought he was going to eat me. So I ran across the fields. And King Lion said, aha, so it was the python who scared the rabbit, who startled the crow, who alarmed the monkey, who killed the owlet. And now Mother Owl won't wake the sun so that the day can come. He turned to Python and Python said, well, it's Iguana's fault. I said, hello. I said, hello, and he wouldn't say hello to me. And I thought he was plotting something against me. And I was frightened. I was just looking for a place to hide when I crawled in the rabbit's burrow. And King Lion said, ah, so it was the iguana who frightened the python, who scared the crow, who startled the monkey, who, no, alarm, who startled the crow, who alarmed the monkey, who killed the owlet. And now Mother Owl won't wake the sun so that the day can come. Now, Iguana was not at the meeting. He had not heard the summons. So Antelope was sent to fetch him. And when Iguana came up with the sticks in his ears, everybody laughed at him. He looked absolutely ridiculous. And King Lion pulled the sticks out of his ears. And he said, Iguana, what mischief are you plotting against Python? And Iguana said, what? None. Python is my friend. And Python said, well, then why didn't you say hi to me? And Iguana said, I didn't see you. I didn't hear you. Mosquito told me such an enormous lie. I put sticks in my ears. And King Lion laughed and he said, so that's why you had sticks in your ears. As a public service announcement, again, don't put sticks in your ears. And Iguana said, that's right. It was the mosquito's fault. And King Lion said, ah, it was the mosquito who annoyed the Iguana, who frightened the python, who scared the rabbit, who startled the crow, who alarmed the monkey, who killed the owlet. And now Mother Owl won't wake the sun so that the day can come. And all the animals shouted, Punish the mosquito! Punish the mosquito! And Mother Owl was satisfied that justice had been done, and she hooted for the sun. Woo! And up it came. Now the mosquito was listening nearby. She was hiding under a curly leaf, and she heard the whole thing. But the animals could never find her, so she was never brought to justice. So to this day, the mosquito has a guilty conscience. And that's why she flies about whining in people's ears, saying, Zzzz, is everybody still angry with me? To which she gets an honest answer. 
Thanks for listening to Why Mosquitoes Buzz in People's Ears. If you like this story and you'd like to read more stories like it, then click on the link below and you can find other stories like this in the St. Clair County Library System. And join us August 11th for our next Folk Tales and Fables where we're going to hear the story of the Kildare Puka.